Hi everyone and welcome to this episode of Kuiper Labs. In today's video we're going to be discussing how the body meets its needs or meeting the body's needs. Okay, so the idea is that your main goal is survival. That um, biologically speaking that that is what your body is focused on doing, making sure that you stay alive for another minute, another day, another year. Um, and that beyond that, you know, we recognize that that's a very simplistic goal, just making sure that you don't die. Um, and so then you know, kind of alongside that, that part of your body's goal is also to, to thrive and to be healthy or that, you know, we um, behave in such a way to, to help our bodies to, um, to survive, you know, so it's not just what's the bare minimum to not die tomorrow, um, but also then thinking about things that we would need into the future. Um, but in order for us to, to think about um, how your body is able to survive, we need to first think about, well, what are some of the needs that your body has or that the cells of your body have? Um, because now, um, for what we're going to talk about here, that some of it is at the cellular level. What, does the cell, what do the cells of your body require to, in order to function and to survive? Um, we're also then going to think about some of the other things that your body needs as a, as a, as a larger kind of at a larger scale um, to help you to stay alive and to, and to thrive. And then also we can think about the, you know, some different things which are a little less biological and a little more psychological or emotional needs, which are also important for our survival because the reality, um, the, like in, they say in the, the quote in the matrix, if you've ever seen it, you know, the body is nothing without the mind. Um, and so the actual healthy functioning mind is also um, crucial to your survival as an organism in lots of ways. Okay, so we're going to, kind of as part of doing this, we're going to build a little bit of a mind map. And so we're going to identify some needs and then, and then some kind of key points and a layer a little bit around that. Okay, so um, one of the main kind of um, needs that you have is for nutrients. Okay, so, so thinking about those seven kind of characteristics of living things, you know, whether it moves, respires, so has a way to kind of take in oxygen and undergo respiration, um, it has senses, can it use them, does it grow, does it reproduce, excrete, um, so have a way to get rid of wastes, and then does it um, require nutrients. So some of the ones that, that we would kind of require, so our bodies, um, our um, our cells are powered by glucose as a form of energy. Um, we are, need other forms of carbohydrate. Um, that might be proteins. Um, we're thinking about lipids, that is fats and oils, depending on whether they're solid um, or liquid at room temperature. Um, Yep, and so then there are uh, other kind of nutrients that we need. We need sodium, and we need potassium. We also need calcium. Okay, so you can see that this is, um, and, and there, there are many other kind of things aside from this that might be more micronutrients that are at a smaller kind of scale, um, that you can see that there are heaps of different nutrients that your cells need in order to survive um, and in order to, to be healthy. Okay, so whether it's um, powering the mitochondria that exist inside the cell, whether it's helping to build stru you know, structures within the cell and also for the body at large, whether it's you know, lipids that help to provide structure to membranes and things that, that protect the edges of the cell, whether it's um, certain kind of uh, metals, uh, like certain kind of... Um, we would say, you know, these are minerals that help with um, healthy cell function, especially of things like nerve and muscle cells. Um, you know, so they all stem from food. Okay, now I have written in blue there. Hopefully it's, it's visible enough for you to see. So that the food that we eat, um, and therefore then kind of what, what might follow on from that, you know, in terms of, right, well, how do we have the food? So, you know, we have the processes of eating, we have then digestion and um, what we might say is assimilation. So the actual physical breaking down of food, processing those nutrients and then putting them into the bloodstream so that then they can be passed on to where they need to go. I just realized that that kind of is a, a little, if I just, there's a bit of a shadow that I, I need to create so you can see that um, for a moment. 
Okay, so you have need for, for nutrients and that we access that from the systems that, that help to process our food. Okay, we also have our need for oxygen gas. Okay, so we need it for respiration, which is the chemical process that powers the, the cell. And so um, we get that from our respiratory system. Or, sorry, um, that we get that from the air. Um, via the respiratory system okay so that the air that we breathe that we have you know we have things so that we've got our lungs we've got breathing so this idea of moving air sorry i just realized it's off the screen a little bit so it says breathing down here um so the idea that we can take in air from our environment um and in our lungs, it's able to be processed so that the oxygen that's in that air goes into the bloodstream and then we can transport it where it needs to go. Okay, so that's also blood. All right, so we need oxygen. Okay, so that we need water. Um, and so, again, that comes from food. So some of, you know, some of the water that you need comes from food. Um, that should be in blue and it also comes from drink drinking drinking water okay so it's all, all your other kind of liquids depending on exactly what it is um you know so that we have a, a, a different need for water you know our bodies are around about 70 percent water it makes up a large part of the structure of every cell it makes up a large amount of your um the, the volume of your blood Okay, and so we need it for a whole range of things. So powering at the cell, but also to to um, you know allow your blood to be uh, have enough volume to be able to transport the things that you need around your body. Okay, I'll just clean this a little bit up because I'm conscious that my writing can be messy enough. Let's try not to make it worse. Okay, so you need nutrients. You need oxygen. You need water. Um, so it, you know, so as part of that, so those nutrients are kind of we have sodium. So it's you know a type of of um, salt. You also have a need for warmth. Okay, so that is um, thinking about a consistent internal body temperature. Okay, because we are mammals, uh, we are not lizards, um, and we are not fish or other things like that that um, act, that set their body temperature according to their surroundings. Okay, that you know if you get you know reptiles need to uh, spend a significant amount of time in warm places or near the sun, uh, like in the sun, in order to actually be warmed up um, to be able to process their food and things like that. Whereas we use, um, we use some of the energy from food, we actually kind of, you know, a significant amount of the energy that we access or, or, the, or that we obtain from our food is diverted to keeping us warm or maintaining this body temperature, especially when it's, the environment is cold. Um, we need to use a significant amount of energy um, in order to make that happen. You know, if you're thinking about your Antarctic explorers, you know, had to, um, and, and if you were to still to do that today, thinking, but thinking back then as well, that you would have to eat enormous amounts of food and, and really high calorie loading food, like just drinking a liter of oil a day um, in order to have enough energy for their body to be able to maintain that, that internal body temperature when their surroundings are so cold. Um, and, and so, you know, so sectioning off some of the energy from our food in order to maintain that consistent internal body temperature. Um, and also finding ways to, um, to bring that body temperature down in hot climates. So finding ways to try and lose excess energy um, where levels are getting too high. Okay, um, <clears throat> we also have needs for um, protection. So then we're thinking about, that's also, that's thinking about protection from the micro scale, um, immune system. Okay, that might also be protection from threats. Okay, so we have systems like adrenaline to help keep us safe from uh, large threats. You know, if you are... You know, in, in physical danger, that then ways that you can process that. Um, and then that also, you know, we have um, needs for for structure. So we meet that need with our skeleton. 
or skeletal system um, and, and its different components in terms of the, the bones that you have to protect vital organs and to provide attachment points for your muscles and so on. Okay, we also have um, uh, you know, other needs that we have needs for love and relationships. Okay, so thinking about those psychological and emotional needs that we are not meant to be solitary creatures unlike um, others in nature, that we need to be in relationships with other people. Um, and, you know, in some capacity, that's not just about a romantic thing, but actually just being able to make connections and be around others. Um, you know, so we have that need. Um, and so then we tend to socially form into groups and we have form families and we develop friendships and so all those sorts of things. Okay, um, th that's all part of that as well. Okay, so you can see that our body has a whole range of different needs, okay, and lots of different ways of meeting or addressing those needs, whether it's taking things in from our, you know, our outside environment, whether it's uh, certain ways of functioning that help to process um, how things work to keep us alive, okay? All of these sorts of things are uh, ways that our body is set up to meet those needs. All right, thanks very much for watching. Bye for now.